Last month, I released a video called Animating in Blender is Easy. That same day, another animator released a video called Maya Animator Tries Blender and he didn't have a good time with Blender. Now, I don't know what the algorithm gods were up to that day, but they decided to show my video to the viewers of that video. And so they flooded my video, leaving a ton of negative comments about Blender's animation capabilities, even though they've never animated in Blender themselves. They just kept referencing that video. So it made me think, what if I, someone who professionally animates in Blender, checked out the Maya animators video to see what went wrong for them and how to fix it. But before we get into it, I just want to say that this video is all in good fun and learning. I'm here to explore and share, not throw shade at the Maya animator who was just trying Blender. So let's try and keep it respectful. I, I know it's a hot topic, but let's just get into the video. I'm using the Epic Fig Rig plugin here to rig it and get animating. The first thing that I struggled with was the modes. You know, you can't just start animating. You have to be in a certain mode to animate, but you can't even get into that mode unless you have a controller selected and then that mode becomes available. Yes and no. And I can understand how coming from Maya where there is no modes, you just click on whatever and you can move it or adjust it. It's a different workflow. So I can see how that was the first problem. So let's see what other issues he runs into with this. To see, I can't even select this thing. <laughs> yeah, he's in edit I select mode right this now. dang thing again. Oh, I'm in edit mode. I got to get out of edit mode, get into object mm -hmm. mode, then select this, and then I can go into pose mode, and now I can start animating. <laughs> if I wanted to adjust the environment model, okay. so I did. let's we'll stop here. Let's get into it. So in Blender, there is two modes that you, as an animator, you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about edit mode and whatever other modes there may be if you're dealing with an object. When you're using a rig or an armature, really you have these three modes, but all you need is pose mode and object mode. Now, again, I can see how it's difficult coming from Maya where there is no modes, but all he has to do to actually switch between modes and different characters is so you can say, hey, I want to animate Max. And if we had May character here too, we would select May as well while in object mode. And then you just press control tab, you're in pose mode. It takes 0.1 seconds. It's just a shortcut to know. And you can easily just go between object mode, pose mode. So let's say I have a camera and I want to go back and forth between Max, which is my character rig and the camera. And the camera is an object, Max, if you want to move him, he's an armature. You have to go in pose mode. So you can easily just work on Max, do your animations, and then control tab, move the camera, go back to max, control tab, and continue working. So it's just one extra hotkey that you have to think about when you're animating in Blender versus Maya. Now, it's not just for nothing. There's a benefit to this, and it's an issue I've had with Maya when because it has no modes. The reason for the modes is that you can select what characters or props you want to animate with. You can select multiple, it doesn't have to be one at a time. So this way you won't accidentally animate other objects or controllers on other characters when you drag select something, which is an issue I've had on productions in Maya where I do an animation pass and I don't realize that I've also animated a controller or two on another character as well, even though that character was already animated. So I either got to undo all my animations or get rid of all the animations on those two controllers, two or three controllers and reanimate them again. So this way you won't act, if there's multiple characters in the scene, you won't accidentally animate other characters. You can just animate the characters that you're animating at that moment, right? How often do you switch between characters when you're animating? And all you have to do for that is just control tab. The biggest mistake people in general make is that they think Blender is just a free Maya. They don't take the time or put in the effort to learn Blender as its own software, which leads them to then get frustrated because it doesn't work like Maya. It's not Maya. So when you're trying to learn Blender, make sure you're going into it with the idea of learning a brand new program because that's what you're doing. You're learning a brand new program, which is 30 years old since conception and it's come a long way. All right, so let's see what other issues he runs into. Can't click this to show you the shadow catcher thing because I have to go back to the other mode. How to pose mode. Okay, let's mode. stay in pose mode. Yeah. So I'm in pose mode. I converted all the hotkeys here to the typical Maya one so that I could a bit more intuitively go through this because I, I just, my head can't get wrapped around the hit G 
the middle mouse drag to isolate or uh, mm. the, you know, cancel out of this, hit escape, I guess. I don't, you know, there's just... No, okay. So in this case, he doesn't know how to move his controllers in Blender. So he's gone ahead and set up the gizmos here for rotate, move, and scale to his Maya hotkeys, which is fine. That's fair. That's how you work in Maya. But he thinks that Blender doesn't have that. And he thinks that when you press G or S to scale or R to rotate, that's the only way to work in Blender. And that is not the case at all. Yes, you can use G and uh, all those other hotkeys to make some quick changes. And especially if you're in a certain view, you only move in that axis. So if I want to quickly move the this axis, I just press G and I can move the hand and then press R to rotate it. So it's you can make quick changes very fast. But how I animate in Blender, you have this button right here, your transform gizmo. And it has your rotate, it has your scale, and it has your translates all in one. Or you can grab the center and move everything from any axes. So in fact, <laughs> I like this way more than Maya because you have all of them in one and you can even select, you see the buttons all the way back there, I can select it from the front even though it's the translate X in this point is uh, behind the gizmo. You can still select it. It's very handy. You can even go, the, I don't know, I'm pointing like you can see my point. The white circle is also from your perspective. So you can rotate it from your perspective as you change your perspective. So super, super handy. The G, S, R are just there for quick changes or very precise changes. Because when you press G, X, for example, you only move it on the X axis. So here I press G, Z, and you only move it on the Z axis. G, Y, only move it on the Y axis, and so on. So same with rotating, same with if I want to move stuff in the graph editor, I can just grab everything, say G, Y, and only move it in the Y axis. Now on to the next. I think here we move into the graph editor section of the video. Blender graph editor offers a lot. So you just have to know where the stuff are, but if you don't, then you can. it can be frustrating because you, you don't know how it works. So let's see what kind of issues he runs into. And somewhat work relatively to like what I'm used to working. The other thing that I ran into was just managing the graph editor, which is where mm -hmm. I like to work. And the main issue I had here was if I if I can select a controller that has some keys here, I, I'm gonna turn this on because I hid this earlier. For some reason, when I was using a plane uh, for the shadow here, it still listed the rig in the graph editor along with the plane, even though I didn't have the rig. Select. So right away, I can tell that he has his character pinned. You can see it right there. He has his character pinned in the graph editor. I, he may have done this accidentally, but when you pin something to the graph editor, just like any software that has a pin function, it stays there. So he's complaining that the rig stayed in the graph editor when he pinned it to the graph editor. So that's just a mistake on his part, I suppose. And I was trying to animate this plane and for some reason, the rig yeah. is still... So he still has a pin. So he's just confused about the graph editor, how the pin But I don't have works, it selected. So why would it ever be there? It doesn't, I don't understand that. So I had to hide it because um, I was trying to animate the plane to match the bus moving uh, so that the shadow of the bus. So he goes on for another minute about how the character is staying in the graph editor and it's it's weird and it's silly, but again, it's all, he just has to unpin it. Just click the button again, problem solved. So let's move on to the next problem. Attributes here. So this is another frustrating thing. You know, in Maya, when I select these, not only does it highlight them in the graph editor, it hides everything else. So I just immediately that's how it should be. And that's see exactly when you're the curve that I want to see. So that section is complaining about how Blender doesn't hide other channels in your channel box or in the graph editor. So when you drag select, you only want that channel to be selected, and that is very fair. That's how I animate too. But it's not a Blender issue. It's just an option you have to tick off. So. All you have to do is just go to preferences, animation, and it says only show selected F curve. And that is exactly the issue that he has. You just have to check that on, which I always have it on. You just do this once, save your preferences. You never have to do this again. So it's all about setting up your workflow to what you want because Blender isn't just for animation. Blender is a complex program that has modeling and rigging and all these other things. So you just have to set it up for animation the way you like to work. Now, if I click on just, let's say, location Z and I drag select, only location Z is selected. Everything else is hidden as it should be. Problem solved. So let's watch a little bit more of how he struggles with this and 
what his conclusions are. That's not possible. I would have to go through and untick all of these other things just to see. Nine clicks to isolate one curve. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? No, it's just one click, so you never have to do it again. That's it. Now, I hope you're enjoying these tips so far, but if you want to master all of Blender's animation tool, we've created a comprehensive curriculum with tons of assets in our Blender Basics course, which we're now calling Master Blender in seven days. It doesn't roll off the tongue as much, but it's a lot more descriptive of what the course does. So check out toanimate.ca for more information about that and our ultimate animation course, which has the Blender Basics included in it as a bonus. Now, let's move on to problem three. What kind of frustrating was if I control middle mouse click to zoom in vertically on this, and so I have my mouser exactly on the curve, I wanna just keep that curve exactly where it is in the graph editor, and I wanna zoom in vertically on it so that the you know this curve will get taller in the graph editor. But watch what happens when I do that. I'll hit control middle mouse click, and it moves the curve that I wanted to maintain that, that's why I put my cursor there. That's what yeah. I mean. So you can always just focus on stuff on the graph editor. The hotkey for this is the period button on the numpad. You just press that and you focus on your selection. So if I want this to be even wider, then like you said, I can hold control and middle mouse. And it's pretty much exactly where my cursor is. It's expanding from that point. So if I go downwards, it gets smaller and it's it's all like within that center. So <laughs> with the graph editor and like the whole scaling thing, you actually have a lot more options than, than Maya without add-ons. I don't, don't come at me. I use both. So, you know, with Blender, you actually also have the 2D cursor. So you can change your pivot point to the 2D cursor and then just shift right click and you can move your 2D cursor. And so what you can do is you can scale everything from your 2D cursor on the graph editor. So let's say scale and it only scales outwards from there. Uh, scale Y, it only scales vertically from that point that I, that I set, the 2D cursor. You can even rotate by pressing R. You can rotate from that point. You can rotate your points on the graph editor by having your 2D cursor at a section and then pressing R. So th there's a lot more stuff you can do, but it's not a 2D cursor video here. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with Blender if you know how. <laughs> especially with the graph editor. So let's let's go on to the next issue that he runs into. Help me understand that. <laughs> what in the heck is going on there? Because it's so hard to go between different curves of different values, uh, which is another thing in Maya, like I can just go one, two, three to go absolute normalized uh -huh. or stacked curves. And I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure they have this somewhere. Yes. They have normalized here, but yes. that doesn't seem to do. Okay, so, so here he runs into an issue where he wants all his curves within the same range. So you don't have an issue where your X value is at like 10, but then your Y value is at like 200. So you have to like scroll all the way down to get to the 200 value. And he, he almost had it. He almost had it. Realized that Blender does have normalize, which is the button for that. It's called the same thing in Maya. And he had it deactivated, but then he activated it, but he had every other channel hidden. So the only thing he was normalizing was that one channel. So all he had to do was unhide everything and just check that only selected F curves button so he can focus on whatever channel he wants to work on. And once he pressed normalized, he just had to select everything and focus on it if you wanted to focus on everything. So here I have normalize on, and you can see the lowest the values go in the graph editor is negative one, and the highest the values go is one. So all of your curves are with a negative one to one, and you, won't, you will never have to scroll all the way down and scroll all the way up to find a curve. It's all within that range. So let's move on to the next issue. The same thing. I don't, I don't really know what this is about. That Those are kind of the main barriers I have. And then inserting a key is similar to Maya, where I can go in here instead of, I, I really don't like the hit I, and then I have to choose the stuff. Who I, would, who would like this? It's just so many button clicks right. to get to a key. Um, I have auto key turned on, which is great. Right, so his problem is that every time he presses I, these sets of options show up and he has to select which option of keying he wants to do. Well, again, it's, it's a non-issue what key he wants to set. So you can actually come down here to your king and change it to whichever one your heart desires. So the one I usually go with is location, rotation, scale, and custom properties. So this sets keys on anything an animator would want 
keyed in an armature, so in an array. But you have the option to actually choose anything. So you can set visual location. So it'll set a key on the world location of a controller. So if you want to match two characters or the position of two controllers, you can copy one, paste it into another controller, and it will snap to exactly where that other controller is in space. And of course, you have a buttload of other options too. But all he has to do is just set one of them in the keying section, and then he can go on and just press I, and the option will never pop up again because you've already set it. And for me, this gives me a lot more control over my animation than when I'm animating in Maya. Let me see if I can recreate that. So if I move this, it should set a key. Uh, this already has keys on it. Maybe this isn't a good example. And so, yeah, this is a different kind of, so this is the transforms, not for the thing I have selected. I have to, which is weird because in the so channel box, as soon as you select something so in Maya, you get to see exactly the thing you have yeah, selected. The, the channel box. Yes. Because wh why wouldn't you want to see the thing you have selected? That's why you're selecting it. Cause you want to change it. That's right. But for some reason in Blender, you kind of have, again, it's this management thing. Where I have to, I think, I guess, go to the armature. No, this is where no, it is. you don't. Okay, so uh, the thing he's looking for is the channel box, which is right here. So whatever controller you select, you have the location, rotation, scale, and the custom properties that that color has. So here we have parent space. So you can change the parent space of the head, for example. All this is right here. He had the channel box is there, but he has it hidden. So all he has to do is press N and the channel box will appear. But he has it hidden, um, it may have been by accident, but then he's going to armature and changing the arm, the armature controllers and is doing this weird, uh, like eating your food and stuff like this. He's eating his food like this because he doesn't know that he just has to press N to bring up his channel box. You can hide the channel box in Maya too. You just, you have to know the hotkey to bring it back, turn it on and turn it off, right? N, N, that's it. The rest of this video shifts away from animation, so if you want to watch the full thing, I'll have the link in the description. But if you want to learn more about animation in Blender, then you can check out the infamous video we've been talking about, how animating in Blender is easy.